If we're doing microscopy that day, the first thing you're going to want to do is to make a little mat for the microscope. The reason we do this is because these microscopes are big, and if you want to move them on the lab bench, the last thing you want to hear is it, it getting stuck as you're moving it. This way you can work in an environment that isn't going to be harmful to the microscope. You're going to be assigned a microscope, and microscopes are given numbers that are going to correspond to your seat number or whatever is told to you by your instructor. Our microscopes are kept in a cabinet, and the cabinets are numbered. So there's a number on the shelf that's going to correspond to the microscope. This is where you're going to get your microscope and also where you're going to return it for the entire semester. When you go to take the microscope, you're going to grab it with two hands. There's a handle on the arm. Lift it carefully out of the cabinet and support the bottom, the base, with your hand. Hold it close to your body and walk to your seat. Once you get to your seat, you're going to lay the microscope gently on the little mat that you prepared for it. Take off the cover and just put it to the side. Once you get your microscope safely to your workspace, and on the mat of paper towels that you prepared for it, you're going to want to plug it in. The plugs are right here on the edge of your lab bench. So let's review some of the parts of the microscope. We'll start with the bottom and we'll work our way up. You know that the bottom is the base, and this part of the base is called the substage. This is where our light source is. The power for the light source is right here on the right-hand side. It's a green switch. Go ahead and turn that on. Over here on the left side, there is a light adjustment dial. You can up the intensity of light or you can dim the light. Your goal is you want enough light to see your specimen, but you don't want so much light it's blinding and it's going to give you a headache. This next part is the condenser. The condenser is going to focus and tighten that beam of light before it goes through our specimen. Your specimen is going to sit on this, which is called the stage. The stage is controlled by the mechanical stage apparatus. There's two knobs, an upper knob and a lower knob. The upper knob will move your specimen back and forth, and then the lower knob is going to move it side to side. This way you can move your field of view across the slide as you're viewing it. This is called the revolving nose piece. On the revolving nose piece, we have our objective lenses. This first lens, the smallest lens, it has a red band on it. This is where you want to start. This is called the scanning objective lens. It has a magnification of 4x, meaning that it will magnify the sample four times. This lens, in combination with the magnification of your ocular lens, which is 10, is going to give a total magnification of 40x when viewing a specimen with the scanning objective lens. For this class, mostly what you're going to do is you're just going to find where your specimen is. To get to the next lens, you're just going to rotate this, which is called the revolving nose piece. Our next lens has a yellow band on it. This is called low power objective lens. It has a magnification of 10x. 10x from this low power objective plus 10x from the eyepiece, that's going to give us a magnification of 100x. The next lens is called the high power objective lens. So you just rotate your revolving nose piece. It has a blue line on it. It also, all the lenses tell you the magnification. And so it says 40X. So 40X from the high power objective lens plus 10X from the ocular, that gives us 400 magnification when using this lens. Revolve it one more time. This next lens that has the white band, that is the oil immersion lens. This is the lens we're going to have to use to view our bacteria. This has a magnification of 100x. So 100x from oil immersion times 10x from the ocular. 
maximum magnification for this microscope is 1000x. This is the body tube. The body tube contains mirrors that reflect the image through our lens up to our ocular lens. This is the reason we always want to be really careful with the microscope. This is why we have it on a paper towel mat so we can move it without jarring it. These mirrors are in alignment. These are new scopes, so they look really, really nice. But any sort of jarring or tilting of the scope can move these mirrors and that's going to affect our image. So these are our ocular lenses. This is a binocular scope, meaning that there's two ocular lenses so you don't have to do the squinty eye thing. So it's kind of nice. Other features to this microscope is that these are adjustable. So you can set them to the width of your eyes so whatever's comfortable for you. Also up here, if you notice, these are rubbery. I wear glasses, so if you wear glasses, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna fold down that rubber lip. This way you can just press your glasses up against the lens and so you don't have to take your glasses on and off. If you don't wear glasses, you're gonna wanna flip up these rubber rims. What this is gonna do for you, it's gonna eliminate the light coming from the side when you're viewing your specimen. There are two focus knobs on this microscope. The inner knob is called the coarse adjustment knob. This is what you're going to use when you're just placing your specimen onto the stage and you're just trying to get it into view for the first time. The outer knob, or the smaller knob, that is the fine focus. This is what you're gonna be using when you go between lenses. These scopes are parfocal. They're not perfect, but when you change lenses, increasing magnification, you shouldn't have to adjust them too much. 